Hello and welcome to St Margaret Lothbury and our online service. My name is Will. We're going to start today's service by worshipping together. Jesus, I am so in love 
with our hands Lift it high We'll pray And it's you, God We adore Singing hallelujah Welcome, uh, as I repeat Will's earlier welcome to this service from St. Margaret Lothbury, wherever you are when you watch it, and uh, whenever uh, you get around to seeing it, it's great that you were able to join us, and I hope that it will be an encouragement to you and that God will speak to you as we have worshipped and as we look at his holy word. And thank you, Will, too, for leading us in worship. Uh, that was great, and we'll be back to you in a few minutes' time. May I read to you a few verses from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, a famous uh, story in the life of the Lord Jesus. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be a guest of a sinner. But at lunch Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. One of the uh, surprising elements of the last few months is sometimes the most unexpected people have dropped into church here in Lothbury. Uh, it's always been great to see people who in normal times have been regular attenders at our services. Uh, and they've just popped up for the city today for the day to, to get something from the office or to, to meet with their boss or colleague and have dropped into church on their way back to the station in the afternoon. But I've also seen those who for a reason they can't quite explain have come and sat quietly in church and often just asked for a brief conversation. And recently I had a very honest chat with a particularly wealthy individual. Occasionally I'd read in the press about his successes, even though I'd only seen him a couple of times and probably spoken to him uh, very briefly once before. His reflections that day were not untypical. He clearly enjoyed being rich, but he was also realizing, as he never had done before, that it had its downsides as well. It had left him uncertain who his real friends were. In the past, it had been much clearer. Long hours meant that he was beginning to feel more and more out of touch with his children. He also, and very honestly, 
wasn't sure that he liked who he was becoming. And Zacchaeus would have understood these feelings totally. Uh, but he learnt that day of which we just read that that needn't be the end of the story. His encounter with the Lord Jesus underlined that for him. For the transformation that happened to Zacchaeus that afternoon 2,000 years ago was totally remarkable and for some of us our familiarity, our familiarity with the story stops us realizing how remarkable it was. At first glance, Zacchaeus had everything he could want. He was professionally very successful, a chief tax collector, very rich, with an assured future. The successful foundations of the Jericho economy meant that in his job, he had actually discovered a magic money tree. And he clearly had an effective team working for him who would exploit this to the full. However, behind the scenes, things were very different indeed. His professional success must have meant that uh, he not only made money on the side in addition to his legitimate collections, but he also took a cut from the income of his junior tax collectors, which, which made him probably hated by them. He would have been despised too by his neighbours Someone has written as his wealth grew and his home became more lavish, his servants more numerous and his clothes more impressive. Others must have realised that all that was only possible because of the exorbitant taxes that they had had to pay. So for all his success and all his wealth, he was desperately lonely and deeply dissatisfied. In his more honest moments, Zacchaeus must have been realising more and more how empty his life had become. It had begun to lose anything that was to be of lasting value. And as the years passed, he lost to so many of the hopes and the values and the relationships that must once have mattered and once made him genuinely content. It was little wonder then that he was curious to see Jesus. Everyone had been talking about him and he was due to visit Jericho. He also had the unusual reputation for a rabbi and a prophet and everything else that people said of the Lord Jesus at this time, the unusual reputation of quite enjoying the company of tax collectors. That must have made Zacchaeus, lonely as he was, even more curious. But how could he make seeing Jesus possible. To mingle with the gathering crowds would have demanded a lot of courage. He was smaller than most other people and would have needed to have been at the front of the crowd to see Jesus as he wanted to. No one would have helped him get there and many, one would, have, many would have taken the opportunity to give him a kick or a punch for he was such a hated figure, this Zacchaeus. He would have ended up the day not having seen Jesus and been black and blue with bruises as well. So he ran ahead and climbed a mulberry tree, which provided a superb vantage point. And shortly after settling down, 
in the branches of that tree, his life changed completely. From the anonymity of the tree, he found himself spotted by Jesus and told, him, and told that he was to entertain him and his party to lunch, much to the horror and anger of many in Jericho. In Jesus that day, Zacchaeus encountered, encountered the generous love of God, the love that changed him as it has changed billions of people over the last 2,000 years. This love meant that Zacchaeus could never be the same again. And as a result, he decided to pay back those who, had, who he had defrauded and compensate uh, them for having been cheated over the years. And he went far beyond what was necessary in doing this. His generosity must have left him in greatly reduced circumstances, but he had no doubt at all that it was worth it. Today, the Lord Jesus said, salvation has come to this house, Zacchaeus. And although experienced primarily by Zacchaeus in a new relationship with God, it also led to a different life, different values, restored relationships with other people. He rediscovered a contentment that he hadn't known for decades, and a contentment that until then he thought he'd lost forever. And through this encounter, we hear Jesus inviting us, as this year draws to a close, to reflect on who we're becoming, how we've changed, what matters most to us, whether we like what we've become, to reflect on the importance to us of money, and achievement of faith and relationships. And we can also be reassured afresh of God's astonishing love for you and for me. That love which, as we experience it, frees us to be honest with him as we pray how life is for us at the moment and what needs to change. As I reflected on this passage over the last few days, I asked myself again how honest I am as I pray. How conscious am I of the Holy Spirit filling me afresh? day by day, with that astonishing, life-transforming love of God, which can be yours and mine, because we've encountered Jesus Christ. above all others. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, the King above all kings. And unto the Lamb, and all of glory, worthy is He. Your very 